So, I got my uh, 2003 Jimic 2500 Heavy Duty. And what I'm going to be changing today is transmission cooler lines. I run from about somewhere in here all the way up there. So, I think there's, there's three lines total. Two of them obviously come from the transmission. Um, this top one, I believe, goes to the cooler on the front here, right in there. So, here's the lines. I think that's the cooler to the uh, radiator. And this one over there is to the transmission. Um, I got all three of them, so I'll probably just change all three of them while I have it apart. Because this one here is leaking. Um, where were the rubber? The rubber section's crimped on. Uh, so these are just dormant, dormant uh, lines that I got. Hopefully they don't leak at the rubber crimps because I've gotten some before and they, they seem to tend to leak there. Uh, I haven't had very good luck with purchasing transmission cooler lines without them leaking. So first thing I'm going to try to do is I think I'm going to try to take this grill off. It'll be a little bit easier to get at the lines and then I'll take that, that uh, skid plate thing off that's down there. And uh, I'll be able to reach up underneath to kind of feed things through. So, first I'm going to do is take these clips off. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Got these special pliers. I don't know how well they're going to work. I got these. Or I might just use a screwdriver. Whatever kind of works better. So, it's supposed to kind of get in there and grip that little inside piece. And, oh, I seem to work all right. Not too bad. So, these ones are kind of straight. I've seen them where they're kind of 90 down too, and they got the little, little gripping fangs. So, I guess you give them a try. that piece. So I think there's a 10 millimeter screw right there. And then these just these little clips here. Like there's one, two, three, four. And then on the corner here, you can see behind this light there's another one there. You want to be careful when you're pulling them off. Obviously you don't want to break the plastic where it's hooked onto. So you might want to take a screwdriver and kind of get them started and push down on them just so they kind of pop out a little easier. So kind of what I'm doing is I'm just getting behind here. So that's pushed in, as you can see. I don't want to really pull on it because you can break the little piece that sticks out. So I'm getting just behind the, uh, the metal tab there. I'm just kind of popping it off like that. Or you can reach in behind here and push down right on the little doodad. And I get it from the backside too, if you can reach in there. So I'm gonna get the bottom ones out. Uh, probably gonna take the headlight out so I can Reach in there to that one, which is just pull these rods out, and then the headlight comes out. And then you can get into that because I just don't want to break the plastic off the grill where these little metal tabs are, because then obviously it's not going to hold itself on anymore.
I don't know if you can see it, but there's this little little ear on the edge of that. And I just came in here like this and I, I pushed that ear in. So and kind of pried a little bit. And uh, just so I can keep that from ripping off. And then you're going to have another one there. Same thing on the other side and on uh, that other corner as well. So, depending on what type of grill you have, mine's got this little black um, spacer thing under there. And on the corner here, on the back side of the fender, there is another kind of, I don't know, prong mount that basically it's the same thing that's all over these. And uh, you gotta push that in too, because that's holding that part. Well, you can see it right there. You gotta Push those together and push it forward. All right, so pull these three tabs out so I can get this back, so we can get these out easier. Unhook the temperature sensor so we get that out of the way and a little more play to it. Um, so like there's that plastic shroud under there. We'll pull that off. Those are some 15 millimeter bolts. So right there, just that plastic thing. Take that down. Then I'll have easier access to Kind of get my hand in there and, and get the stuff around and uh, make things a little bit easier all right so i'll pull this bumper right off um it's that bolt that bolt that bolt and that bolt and then then i won't really have anything in the way so i can just kind of come and, and feed the lines all the way right in and i don't have to worry about trying to bend them around everything as much i mean i might have to a little bit but at least i won't have to worry about kind of hitting the bumper here
so there's two more in the corner right here where a bar comes from the frame and then up to the front of the bumper. There. Now it should be off. So, you can see how they kind of run straight back now. So basically I can kind of unhook them, pull them out to the front rather than try to bend these down and then wrap them around there. I can just kind of feed them right in. That should be, should be good. You gotta get this clip down first. That clips down. Um, this is like this is it's a little e-clip is what they call it um, that holds it in there. You could fish it out here, like pick it at the at the end where it loops, because it, it just kind of goes around like this in there. And you could kind of pick it out and then work its way out. Or they have little tools that you put in there, kind of like the quick disconnects. Um, I have some from the. And when I uh, put the, see this is, this is what they look like. So basically you get something like this, it fits in there, you put it in and then you turn it like a quarter turn and it opens up those little pieces and you can pull the line out. Uh, I'm going to say I got these when I put the radiator in and I just saved them because I thought well they might come in handy. Let's we'll see if they'll work. Maybe. It doesn't seem like they're gonna. It's kind of seized in there a little bit. I might have to just take them out. Oh. Might work. That worked. So, yeah, that's how you do it. I don't know if I got that on camera because I wasn't paying attention. But anyway, so that's how you can do it. I'm never gonna catch can or catch whatever dribbles out. Um, so that's that's kind of how you take those apart. Obviously, there's gonna be two here, two on the transmission, and then two on the back of the radiator. All right, so I pulled one out. Wasn't too bad. Pulling it out. Um, here's the line, it's the long one. Runs from the back up to the transmission cooler on the driver's side. So, now I'm down here. Problem I'm having, I don't know if I can get the flashlight in there, is getting them the fittings off the transmission. So, there is one fitting there, and there was one there. Uh, you can see I still have. I don't know if you can see. You see, I still have the quick connect on, connect on there. They are rusted pretty good, so I'm not going to really get them out. I'd actually fight with them pretty, pretty hard to get the first one off. So I figured I'll just get the new fittings. So I just spun them out and uh, then replace them because I don't feel like trying to rip them off the lines and then hope that the the O-ring inside them still seals. So here's the rear one. Um, it's a 3 8 line with, I believe, a quarter inch thread, is I think how that is. I could be wrong. I got a. I, I found them on the advanced website, and the only one they had that looked like this said quarter inch thread, but it did say without heavy duty cooling, so it may not be for this. I don't know if this constitutes as heavy duty cooling. Um, so I need one of them. I'm going to need the other one that I pull off. And I'm gonna get this one because it's pretty, pretty ugly looking. Um, I think this is a 3 8 line to a 3 8 thread. I'm gonna find out. And uh, 
I wasn't gonna change it because it seems like it's stuck in there pretty good and I didn't want to break it but if I can get this fitting it might not be a big deal although it could be corroded in there I might be opening up a can of worms that I don't want to deal with I'm gonna get the fitting anyway just in case um, I want to change it later if I don't do it now I'll probably like pry on it a little bit and see what happens if it moves or or what it might be seized in there pretty good because aluminum and steel don't usually mix but my main concern is obviously the ones that are leaking so I'm gonna pull them out there was a little hanger right in the middle of the engine uh, two clips that held the lines uh, top clip was for this part that goes to the transmission which is the or not the transmission but the part that goes to the radiator was the upper clip a lower clip was the one that goes to the back of the transmission and then up here to the cooler so I'm gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna go see if I can get the fittings So I'm going to gather that these are both quarter inch threads and then this one's a three eighths. So three eighths tube to a quarter inch thread, look like that. And that one I think is going to be three eighths because it's definitely bigger. So I'll bring these with me, make sure I get the right ones. All right, so I got my sundry pieces. This was the rear part of the transmission. This is the front part of the transmission. Um, they're both quarter inch by uh, 18 thread, NPT if. Um, <clears throat> so this one, small one, is this number, the 73-4952. The longer piece, is the 73-6677 and then you got 73-4954 it's a 3 8 tube to a 3 8 NPT female thread or F thread whatever that means um, <clears throat> this is the part that goes in the old cooler in the front uh, I might not change this I tried to get the other one out a little bit and it seems pretty seized in there so i might just put that off to a different day when it's an actual real problem because i don't want to you know break that cooler trying to get that fitting out when it's not really leaking that much i think the hose is weeping a little bit but it's not anything that i'm really super concerned about without wanting to go out and get that because believe it or not this fitting here was actually really difficult to find uh the dealer would have had to have ordered it uh said it would have been about five days to get that advanced didn't have it autozone didn't have it o'reilly's didn't have it napa had it so that worked out pretty well but i had to go quite a distance to get it uh, they actually had all of them which was pretty good so i'm going to install these and then we'll get some of the lines put in i'm gonna take some tape and i'm gonna put them over the tubes uh to block the holes so i don't get stuff falling in there as i feed it through the front and uh and we'll get those all put back in.
All right, so I've been had by the old, eh, that ought to fit from the manufacturer. Um, so inside they say a little bevel. Well, I don't believe that bevel is deep enough. At least it's not as deep as this one appears to be. That's the Dorman one that I was initially going to get, which is the 800-604. This is the Napa one, which is the 730 dash 4952. I took, I sat there for about an hour trying to get the line to go in there and it would not click into these little tabs. So I finally gave up. I took the fitting back off. I took my other fitting that I had that was the extra one that I was going to use on the front cooler and it snapped right on. So I went and I had to go get this one, which is the Dorman one, and it does look like that that is cut deeper. So I believe this one will work, and that one didn't, but it wasted a lot of time trying to get this one to work. So I'm going to stick this one in, and hopefully that one works. So that's kind of how I had the, the ends taped up. So I got that other line in. It's it's in there. I don't entirely trust it, but I guess it is what it is. Um, I kind of took a mirror, and I looked in, and then the those little three tabs i mean i guess they're kind of on there i mean i don't know it is what it is let's see how it goes i guess um i don't know if it was just a problem with the the tube wasn't flared right or what but now oh, it's in there so i'm gonna put this one in and continue on So I got the lines in. Some popped right in. Hopefully it didn't leak or anything. These little plastic clips here are supposed to go on there to make sure that these don't spring back out to kind of keep them locked, but doesn't seem to want to stay on there very well. Um, I say I was gonna try to change this one, but I tried turning it to, to, to take it off and it, it's kind of like twisting this so I think I'm gonna end up making more of a mess if I mess with it than if I just leave it alone I'll wait till it's an actual problem and then I'll come back into it I'll probably have to change this cooler out when I do it because I think trying to get this fitting out it's just gonna it's just gonna ruin this I'm pretty sure it's gonna be seized in there so that's in there imagine we're all set down here I got the I got the new fittings in. You can see is that one, and that one. So I put the bottom skid plate on. It's actually pretty easy without the bumper on there. Um, let's put the bumper on. 
So you can see right there, that's where one of the bolts were there on the sides. And then obviously you got the one, the one, two, and three, four, and then there's another one over there on the corner. It's just like this one. So, that's about that. Let's see. It is 8.18 right now. I started this at 10 o'clock. Spent a lot of time driving around trying to get parts, finding parts. Messing with that line that they don't want to go together. It took a long time to get this done. A lot longer than it should have. So, a little disappointed in myself, but sometimes that's how it goes. I'll fight you to the bitter end. Even the little simple things can be really difficult and time consuming. But anyway, so hope that could help somebody. Thanks for watching.